Hello, I'm your skeleton As you can plainly see here Some of the 206 bones in the human body And as a baby you start out with about 300 different bones That's a lot considering many views when you are grown 206 bones is what you have as an adult Due to all the fusion your bones do this is a result Ligaments hold the ends of your bones together This is true and muscles attach a bone Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Very good morning ladies and gentlemen Today I'll be presenting the physiology of muscle contraction and relaxation We shall see in details how and by what factors do our muscles contract or relax Starting from the nerve which is the action potential to the movement of our muscles Let's break the ice with some wonderful and real examples to emphasize the needs and importance of the muscle contraction and relaxation. Imagine your biceps contract but doesn't relax or vice versa. How can you write, eat or even send an email? Another real example, how do you think the food you just had on breakfast will digest or even expel out of the body if our smooth muscles are not functioning through contraction and relaxation. It's a disaster, isn't it? In brief, our muscles are truly essential for movement such as running or even storing and moving substances and yeah, maintaining your body heat so, st uh, so stay tuned for our next part which is the propagation of the impulse or action potential let's have a quick look at the biceps muscle structure so here is our muscle and in our muscle there are a lot of fascicles as you can see here many many fascicles in each fascicle there are tons of muscle fiber and clearly is seen here the nerve on the muscle fiber this is our nerve on the muscle fiber that transmit the action potential on the muscle fiber, there are a lot of myofibrils. And in our myofibril, we have the contractile proteins, which are the actin and the myosin, which we'll see for, follow for further details later. The neuromuscular junction. The junction or space between a neuron and a muscle. So here we have a neuron and some myelin sheath wrapped around it. And here is our terminal and terminal bulb. Now the neuron will generate an action potential which will propagate and send signal to the muscles. The neuron and the muscle, as you can see here, are not connected. They are separated by a small gap called synaptic cleft. The action potential is passed on through chemicals called acetylcholine (ACH), which are the, tra the, the neurotransmitters. Let's zoom in this small area to see further details on how our neuromuscular junction 
operates. So here we have an end pulp and on the other side we have the muscle separated by a small gap called the synaptic cleft. These channels are called the ligand gated channels. It's for the sodium ions and on the neuron we have the calcium voltage gated channel. It's important to know that some ions are found usually on the outside of the cells. In this case, there are higher concentration of sodium and calcium on the outside. The ions want to go in, but they are blocked by these channels. Now, normally, there are vesicles in the neuron, in the neuron bulb, which contain the transmitters called acetylcholine. So, these red dots are the ACH. At rest, the neuron is negative. With respect to the outside but when the action potential arrives it will change to be more positive the change of charge will then open up the calcium gates allowing calcium to go in the entrance of the calcium will cause these vesicles to release its content out toward synaptic cleft. ACH will then bind to the sodium channel causing the channel to open allowing sodium to be inward. The sodium ions will generate action potential within the muscle fiber, which essentially will cause muscle to be contracted. Now, let's see what happens after contraction. So here again with our neuromuscular junction. After contraction occurs, acetylcholine will detach off sodium gated channel and move back into the synaptic cleft. Now special enzyme called acetylcholine steroids will break down the ACH into two molecules known as choline and acetic acid. Choline can be recycled again and combined with acetyl-CoA to give the SCH again. So this process keep going again and again. Wish you got that. Muscle will contract or relax when they receive signals from the nervous system. If we go back to our myofibril, which contains the contractile unit called the sarcomere. Each sarcomere consists of alternating thick and thin proteins which called actin and myosin. The thick is the myosin, which attached to the M line. And the thin is the actin, which attached to the Z disc on the outer edges of the sarcomere. Because the actin filaments are anchored to the Z disc.
The sarcomere shortens from both sides when actin filaments slide along the myosin filament. The action between filaments are described as sliding. The myosin filament actually pulls the actin along its length. The cross bridge of the myosin filament attached to the actin filaments and exert force on them to move. Let's invite our contractile filaments and have some discussion. Contraction begins when a bond of ATB is hydrolyzed to ADB and phosphate. This causes the head of myosin to extend and can attach to a binding site on actin forming a cross bridge. An action called Bauer stroke is triggered allowing myosin to pull the actin filament toward M line, thereby shortening the sarcomere. During the Bauer stroke, ADB and phosphate are released and head of myosin remain attached to actin until a new molecule of ATB bind freeing the myosin to either go through another cycle of contraction or remain unattached. Muscle contraction are controlled by the calcium ions. The thin filament is associated with regulatory proteins called troponin and tropomyosin. When muscle is relaxed, the tropomyosin blocks binding site on the actin. When calcium is high enough and ATB is present, Calcium ions will bind to troponin. This places tropomyosin, exposing the myosin bind site on actin. This allows the myosin to attach, forming cross bridge by ATB hydrolyzed to ADB and phosphate, and then the process of contraction happens. Calcium ions are stored in the sarcoplasmic reticulum and are released in response to signals from nervous system to contract. The calcium stores are open once they are received from nervous system which travel along the T tubule. So when myosin and actin slide on each other or the overlap the entire sarcomere shortens as it contracts the entire muscle fiber will shortens and when muscle fibers contract it can produce enough force to move the body so today we have learned how most of our muscles contract and relax starting from the propagation of the action potential then, how does ACH, the acetylcholine, transmits the action potential? And yet, yeah, finally, the factors that contribute in the muscle contraction and relaxation. Hopefully, you understood and gained some knowledge from my platform. I wish you happy and knowledgeable days ahead.